What is up? We are live. This is our webinar series. Really, tonight's Wednesday, so we'll call it a Wednesday webinar series. I got my good buddy, Gabe, Gabriel Tovar with Tovar Financial Group in the house. What is up, Gabe? Thank you for being here tonight, brother. Oh, thanks for having me, Cody. Really appreciate everything. Uh, the opportunity to be here and ready to see if we can help anybody out in the field. Good. I love it, man. We have registrations have been popping like crazy lately as we are talking tonight about the ultimate guide. Not just a normal guide, not just an average guide, the ultimate guide to building profitable referral partnerships and relationships. I can tell you this is extremely important. Uh, as you're jumping in chat tonight, what is up, Josh Rockwood? Good to see you, sir. As you were jumping in the webinar tonight, we have attendees jumping in like crazy with a ton of registration, a ton of people that were super excited about this. I can promise you Gabe is going to deliver. Let us know in chat where you are watching from. I would love to know where you are watching from tonight. What's up, Jonathan Lewis? What's up, Gray Jimenez Galeas? Josh is in North Carolina. What's up, Joshua? Gray, how are you doing? We got Maryland, Utah, Montreal, Canada, Buffalo, New York, New Jersey, Idaho, Tennessee. Can you see all these coming in, Gabe? Uh, I can see them coming in, yeah. Appreciate everybody jumping on. California, Atlanta, Chattanooga, Dallas, Arkansas, Tampa, New York, Houston, Tulsa. Let's go, man. What's up, Joshua Nesbitt? Gabe, I appreciate you being willing to offer and spend some Bermuda. Dude, let's talk about it, man. I love that. Let's just go to Bermuda. You in, Gabe? Let's go straight to let's, Bermuda. Let's go to Bermuda. I like Bermuda. Let's go, man. Uh, what's up, Esther in NYC? What's up, Jose Guerrero in Katy, Texas? That's not too far from you down near Houston. Well, that's, that's down the street. That's Houston. Let's go, man. He could have he watched it in person, you know? Uh, Tommy Overton said, Gabe knows networking and building referral relationships. Dude, Tom, T.O. is an impressive dude, man. Like oh, yeah, he, Tommy? Yeah. Man, he, he, he's had some health stuff. He's pushing through. The dude, he let me spill wine on him last year, uh, last year <laughs> at, a, at an event in Chicago, and he just keeps pushing, man. Okay. I love it. Carol's in Trinidad, from Trinidad. How about that? Oh, wow. Trinidad and Tobago, man. I love it. Okay. Uh, Gabe, well, why, for, for those that don't need, know you, man, I would love for you to, actually, let's do this. Help us out. If you're joining tonight, thank you for where you're watching from. Tell us, whether you're in Georgia, Colorado, or Trinidad, um, say yes if you know who Gabe is. Say no if you do not know Gabe who, who Gabe is, but you're getting to know Gabe tonight. Okay. A um, couple of yeses a few yeses, bunch of no's, Gabe. So we're going to have to remedy that tonight, man. Okay. Sure, yes, sir. We got some yes, man. That's cool. Okay. So for those that do not know you and, and, and your story, I would love, Gabe is an amazing dude, incredibly humble. He will probably try not to brag on himself tonight, but we're going to do that. I'm going to, bra I'm going to brag on him for him. Okay. Um, for those that don't know you, man, I would love for you to share you and your story. He's got an amazing family. He's got a huge heart. And he's given us some of his time on a late Wednesday night. For those who don't know you, man, I'd love for you to start from the beginning when you were like, you know, six pounds, seven ounces, and now you're, you know, 162 pounds and seven ounces, uh, or maybe a couple pounds more. Um, yeah. Talk about you and what you do and, and your whole story, man. All right. Just briefly, uh, I was born and raised here in Austin, Texas, um, raised by a single mom. I never, never had that, that father figure, but. You know, my mom did an amazing job raising us and uh, keeping us in check by being in one of the worst neighborhoods growing up. And I got into insurance 25 years ago by accident, like most people do. And I started doing life insurance and it's just taken off from there. I mean, of course, uh, like any agent, we've had so many struggles. And I think the biggest issue that I had is I never had a mentor. I never had a coach. I never had a system. And I think throughout time, I, I learned how to do certain things on my own. But recently, you know, I started maybe about 15 years ago, I started doing Medicare, Medicare Advantage, mainly down south of South Texas. And then we went to doing ACA 12 years ago and we went from there. So we've been doing um, quite a bit of Medicare and we do all lines, but we're, uh, we branched back. I, I moved back to Austin about two years ago. And so we have an office in South Texas where I'm at right now. We have an office in Austin and we have agents now over the state of Texas. Dude, I love it. How, how many how many agents are, are working with you? We, we got about 60, 65 right now. Dude, let's go, man. I love it. Okay. Uh, Gabe, might be teaching building partnerships and referral relationships. Um, wh why this topic? Is that something to where, like, when you first started in the business, you were really good at this? 
you had to learn this? You've always been a natural at it. Like, what would you say? I had to learn. Um, like most agents, when you start off, uh, it's always a budget issue. I'm yeah. money for leads. Uh, you learn how to go do it. And I, I pretty much learned how to do this with Medicare. Obviously, what we do in Medicare, there's a lot of networking opportunities. Mm. So right away, I started doing that with pharmacies and, and PCP doctors. And yeah. that's really where I focused at, at the very beginning. And I started seeing, you know, why it was profitable you know, to it. And, and I realized after that, just branching out a little bit more, different areas on the networking side. But yeah, I, I did it because it was either that or purchase leads. Yeah. I do like to be more in front of people one-on-one. And so I was in a small community down south. And I decided to do my best to just over and be, be known as the Medicare guy. So Yes. Yes, which you totally are. Also, I've got some special water for us tonight, man. Okay, uh, this is this is this is going to make an even better webinar. Okay, uh, I, like I guess I, I guess we believe in brand branding a little bit, right? Brand it uh, on. Yeah. So you mentioned budget. For those that are out there, help us out. Um, type more or less. If you have more than a thousand dollars to invest in your business, type more. If you have less than a thousand dollars to invest in your business, type less. Okay, help us out because I think a lot of agents have less, um, which means that Gabe is going to help you tonight. With actually, if you have less, you can still be successful and make money, though, right? Exactly. Yeah, we got a lot of less. Yeah, so so mo most agents will come in with less. Yeah, I mean, most agents if they're coming in for this is because of the opportunity, but they come in uh, with not a lot of cash flow. So, yes, it's ideal to come in and buy leads and, and hit it hard. Most people do not have money to buy leads. That, that was my situation. So I just started uh, working, working so many different out there, different networking opportunities, uh, doctors, pharmacies, name it, dental offices, medical equipment, vision, um, homologies, all, all that, that that would all bring people to the same product, which is Medicare. Yeah. You know, people out. Yes, I love it. And, and okay, so w when you first started building these referral relationships and partnerships, uh, what did that look like? How did you go about doing it? And feel free to share some content and some value with these amazing people tonight on how they can start doing that. Started with pharmacy. Obviously, uh, in Medicare, we dealt with a lot of pharmacy. Uh, we were one of the first ones. Uh, I used to be a Humana Market Point agent, so we were the first ones in the Walmarts. 15 years ago. So we're exclusive. We had great relationships with the pharmacy. And as always, most of them weren't educated on how prescription drink. So understanding it extremely good. Obviously, you have to know your product, learn it, and yeah. be a master at it. And then being able to guide the pharmacists and their team of understanding why they needed someone like us to help them made it made it big. And once they started seeing the benefits of sending people to us because we send them back with better better co-pays and just understanding their their prescription costs made their life easier. And so it just, you know, that's where it started with the pharmacy and then later went to the vision marketing. Yeah. Okay. And so when you're, someone's approaching a pharmacy, as an example, um, how do they get in? What do they say? What does that look like? How do you cultivate that relationship? How do you approach them? Well, it's like anything. You're trying to you're trying to separate yourself from the competition. Most mm -hmm. people say, "Hey, I do Medicare. Can you send me people?" Uh, I try to educate the main person, the pharmacist. Yeah, that's also a good. That's also a good point because most people are like telling the pharmacy what's in it for them. And the reality is, I started realizing that many pharmacists and, and all the employees didn't understand when people fell in the donut hole. People are struggling with co-pays, you know, all the options of how to look for different alternatives. And so I would sit with some of these pharmacists for 10, 15 minutes and just talk to them before they went in. And it, it wasn't just about setting up a table and sitting there. It was about, you know, talking to them and explaining to them what they always had these questions. And it was amazing to see that so these, these are very educated people, but they understand their, their prescriptions, are, but they don't understand insurance products. And they were always like, wow, I didn't realize why somebody went from $40 to $250 all of a sudden. And I would, I would explain to them and I would tell them how we could help them and how so many of those people should not be paying so much. 
Mm. And once they saw like it was it was a good deal for them, then they would send us more and more people. Because once they understood the value, uh, we're helping them as well. I mean, we're helping these pharmacies, helping these stores, you know, have that that, that residual client coming back. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, T.O. says Gabe knows how to make a relationships a win-win for both sides. He said that to just us to see, but I thought that was a cool comment. Um, that's a good way to look at it because it's so easy for agents to look at it like, what's in it for me? Like, hey, you should send me business because I help people. But you're saying, okay, pharmacies want people to use them. Yeah. The more they have to pay for their plan, the less likely they are to do it or drop it or whatever, you know, or, or the more expensive the drugs are, the less they want to refill them. Pharmacies technically want you to, 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 to take medications and consistently take them because they get paid when you, you know, do that. Right. That makes sense. That's the business they're in. Nothing wrong with that. They're helping people with those things, with those items. Um, and you're finding ways to make sure that the pharmacy knows what's going on and that you're, that, you know, you're helping them. Also, when, when you, when you, is there, is there certain, do you like recommend certain pharmacies and then you go tell the pharmacy you recommended people to them or how does that work? Yeah, for sure. But especially here in the small town, we had some small uh, individual based uh, small owners pharmacy. So a lot of them were exclusive to them. So I did my best to keep them there. Uh, once you started getting the bigger stores like the Walmart, the CVS and, and chain stores, it's harder for the small ones, but they were working with me. I would do my best to keep them with that local pharmacists and help them out. So it's, it's always helping them stay in business. A yeah. lot of them yeah. are out of business. So, so you try to focus on um, you try to focus on locals because we just had a comment, Ernest, which I think was one of my different name earlier. Um, today, which pharmacies? Question mark. Independence chains. Um, and you don't have to get too specific on like, you know, some of your top clients, but like you're, you're working with, um, you're trying to get them connected with a local pharmacy versus using a CVS or a Walgreens. Not necessarily. It's just that if they already have a relationship, I'm not going to break that from them because a lot of times, uh, these, these new Medicare companies, you know, they're trying to do preferred pricing with the bigger stores like the Walmarts, the CVS. Uh, we, we, we're in an area with a lot of small towns. The last thing I want to do is as a small business owner and try to keep them you know there if they're happy yeah uh, so you know, we, we try to keep everybody at bay you know just make sure everybody's good and yes when they don't have a pharmacy of course you know we try to work with what's better for probably yes. you know sometimes these big chains um they're not as personal as small ones and uh especially down here everybody likes that little small small business. yeah where else are good good relationship partners for agents to get business? Because most agents they're coming in, like you said, they have less than a thousand bucks. They want to write business. They don't know how to do it, and they're looking to build some referral relationships. Obviously, so they can start getting referred. What's well, if, they're in, if they're in the health insurance business, which is Medicare or ACA, you obviously want to look at everything that's related to it, like pharmacies, uh, doctors, medical equipment, uh, ophthalmologists, you name it. You want to do that if you're just trying to dentist. Yes. Who's that? Dentist. Dentist for sure. If you know that you want to work with someone outside that doesn't do Medicare, for example, we've been partnering with PNC agencies mm. because most PNC agencies do not like to touch the, the health insurance side. So then we work out some kind of referral system with them, and then we work their book of business, which is a benefit for them because at the same time. Uh, we're, we're keeping their clients connected because they're sending them to uh, that's yeah. something, uh, real estate agents, loan officers across the board. You know, we do a lot of things. So one of the things I do that we've been having great success with medical groups, uh, we're with a medical group here that we've been able to partner with. They're out of Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, they became here in the Valley, but we're in Houston, Corpus, San Antonio, Dallas. Uh, we pretty much have access to anywhere in that they're at because of the relationship we built with them. And one of the things that these doctors like to see is who's going to help them build a panel. And I think everybody will say, Hey, I can do it. But at the end of the day, I tell them it's not who can build it. It's who can maintain it. Mm. Because we can, we can, most agents can put a hundred people in the doctor's office, but at the end of the day is going to last there. They're going to stick. So those are the relationships we try to grow. 
one of the things that we do that's very exclusive, I believe, is um, most people are trying to get in the door with some doctors. We, we try to see, I think Roger always says this, right? How can I help you? Mm-hmm. And when I go into a doctor's office, when I talk to the doctor, it's, you know, what's your biggest challenge? What is the company you're struggling with? Give me your hardest case. Let me see if I can. Uh, and whenever that happens, then I end up trying to figure out what is their goals. So sometimes a new, uh, we're working with two doctors right now that are brand new. They got to build their panel. So, okay, what are your goals? And let's figure out a game plan to do it. But this isn't just uh, let me sit at your office or let's put an agent there. It's, we have weekly meetings with these doctors. We try to see, okay, what is it that you want to get to, which is the company that you prefer? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you how we're going to get there. That's good. That's what we've been doing the last, the last two, three years. Uh, we've been doing that pretty long. I love that. So just to recap, right? We talked about pharmacies, doctors, equipments, ophthalmologists, dentists. That's anything medical or ACA related, Medicare related. Uh, partner with PNC agencies, real estate agents, loan officers. Also mentioned medical groups. Um, and when you're going through those medical groups and those offices, he's talking about like, hey, what are your goals? How can we help you? What's your biggest challenge? Toughest companies to work with, hardest cases to solve. Like he's really trying to identify what's going on. This is really, really important information. This is really detailed. This is really, really good. Um, and there's a lot of agents that are not doing these things that should be, you know. Well, you, you, have, to, you have to solve something for the doctor or for a pharmacy or medical equipment or something. Uh, one of the other things that helps, obviously, if you have a great relationship with area reps or with the insurance companies, then. Uh, it's very easy to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I have this uh, dentist having this issue. Can somebody call? And, of course, you know, it's just them to help them. Uh, so, but one of the biggest things I think that if you're in a small area, small community, is to really, really get involved in the communities. There's always these events. There's health fairs. Um, just get involved with school districts when they do things. About there a little bit more. We, we did that quite a bit. Uh, a lot of booths, a lot of events, a lot of fairs, and that really helps. Now, I'm in a big city in Austin, very hard. So, same thing, you know, just pick your area where you're closer to. Yeah. You know, community and just start working that area. Don't try to go take over everything, you know, just work your, your little market. There's enough business. That's a good point. That's a big nugget. Like, start and dominate your community and help them first, right? That, that's a huge nugget. Most agents try to, they get in the business and they think, like global expansion before they've written a policy, you know, um, that's a huge nugget, small community events, fairs, schools, et cetera. You mentioned carrier rep relationship with the carrier rep. If they don't know who their carrier reps are or how to build a relationship with them. I mean, sometimes you can even get leads or referrals or like, you know, having a relationship with a carrier rep can be very beneficial for those that, for those that don't know what that even is or how to get in touch with them or what you even mean. Talk through that piece. That's a big piece. So basically, if you're in the Medicare space, then you will have a, a carrier rep. It's pretty much your, your Cigna, your United, your Humana. Uh, those are the area managers that oversee, you know, all the production. And they're the ones that really are, are doing quite a bit. When you can build a good relationship with them, uh, there's marketing money they can give you. Ask for it. Ask for it one. But at the same time, you have to have some kind of production. You know, sometimes you have agents that ask for it, but they have no production. But you just have to look for whatever tool they have uh, or events. When I was starting up, they put me in so many positions to just be in front of people. Uh, mm-hmm. They would sponsor events. They would pay for newspaper ads. Uh, they, they will pay for signs. If, of course, if your production is high, uh, they will give you leads. Have some. But at the same time, it's just it's like anything. You do have to have that good relationship with them. Because at the end of the day, um, that or you have to have great numbers. Your numbers don't lie, then hey, you, yeah. you're going to get, get a lot of help. Yeah, and, and you have a uh, ability to like, yes, you could succeed without knowing them or having a relationship with them, but you're right. They can make it real easy. Like he just mentioned, again, I'm trying to recap some of this stuff because I want you to catch all this. I mean, yes, you can have access to the recording. Yes, it's, you know, you can rewind it later or whatever, but like they can help you sponsor stuff, help pay for ads, newspapers, signs, can provide money, marketing money, and help with events, leads. Also, I've even, I've even been told that like, they will help provide lists of like current policy holders that don't have agents in the area anymore, you know, or whatever. Yeah, they'll, they'll give you a or, orphan list. 
Yes, yes. Uh, you can do agent or record changes. You can help them out. Uh, again, if you're in the position to help. So um, I think if there's one thing that you know, we, we take a bad hit for as agents is, are we honest? You know, most people are having a hard time trusting people. But if you do everything right, if, if you do things the honest way, if there's something my mom taught me, things right, mm -hmm. it's it always stayed with me because when I came here, it, it really, we stood out as the agency that fixed everybody's problems. So yes. when uh, January would start, everybody was put on wrong plans. Doctors wouldn't pay for an insurance. Uh, so everybody started realizing that in my office, we would explain everything a little different and really fix things the right way. Our persistency has been very high. We've been 15 years at this, um, probably like a 96, 97%. And pretty high, having clients for 14 years, 12 years, 10 years. Uh, they stick on the book. Again, yeah. Because you're treating them right and you're doing it right from the beginning. And when everybody else is doing it wrong or the majority are doing it wrong, then uh, that's when you're able to get very good clients, loyal clients. Absolutely. You, you also mentioned earlier, um, like Gabe's been doing this for, for a while. He's had a ton of success. Also, I was getting like some goosebumps. This is phenomenal information. Like I've already got an entire couple pages of notes literally right in front of me. Um, and you've, you've had, you've had a lot of clients, you've been in the business a long time, but you've had some significant growth, um, the last few years as you started to really help agents and build a team, you know, which is really cool. Um, before I actually, before I had another question, before I go there, um, Josh said, wow, that's amazing. Rosie said, will this be recorded? Oh my goodness. Such good info. I have a chamber event for networking. I'm about to go to, okay, good. Um, yes, it will be recorded. We may end up putting it on YouTube. I'm, um, um, that's hopefully so. Um, big nugget, being a problem solver can make you big money. No doubt. What's up to you? Good to see you, buddy. Um, well, before I get to a couple of questions, what are we missing? What else would you like to add? Um, I'm known as a Medicare guy, but reality is I've been doing this for 25 years. Uh, I truly understand wealth management, which is the annuities, the IULs. Uh, we've been doing HA since it started when people said there's no money. It wasn't about the money. It was about helping the, the, the community. So I'm in a community where other agencies said, hey, we're, we're, we're big. We help everybody or we help Medicare. I was like, no, I help everybody. Everybody. I help uh, people under 65. I help people over 65. Uh, but we also solve life insurance. We solve retirement. And so one of the things that lately we, we transitioned as we've grown is we've created different divisions in my agencies. We have a Medicare specialist, a life specialist, an annuity specialist. And we're connected very good and we understand this. Uh, just yesterday, one of our agents, you know, was at a city city meeting. So we're learning how to go hit these businesses and solve problems for them. You know, when you got companies that are still paying for group insurance, when they can pull them out from on a Medicare product, they're saving quite a bit of money. So we're talking about city offices, county offices, state offices that we're getting very involved in because, you know, sometimes people say, well, they're too big. They're not going to let you in. But that's the difference. If you can get in the door with some of these people, and if you bring them value, they're going to listen at some point. And there, there's a lot of money that's being overspent health insurance. People can be, you know, on Medicare or on AC. That's something that we're doing. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of uh, retirement planning now. A lot of, you know, IULs, a lot of annuities. Is, you know? so those are things that, that we're doing now. Yes, that's awesome. And you also mentioned, okay, so city, county, state. I never thought of that, but that's freaking brilliant. Um, also, if you have questions, bring them in. We'll start doing some of that. Um, Alfred said, what do you give to the doctors, pharmacists, et cetera, so they can remember you? I give them. Well, I, I started with, first of all, you know, always giving the doctor that treated us better or, or in the Medicare space, at least in our, in our community, a lot of people didn't have doctors when they first came. Mm -hmm. So if I knew a doctor was a, and the staff was extremely good, we would refer that doctor a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So they, they got to, oh, I partnered up with a doctor recently, maybe like four years ago, even though I had been working with him quite a bit. And it was more because uh, in his board meeting, he wanted, he asked for me to represent him in this transition of an insurance company they were doing because he knew that we had done so much for him. 
Like we, we build this panel just by sending people. A lot of times they're going to remember you if, if the staff is saying, hey, Mr. Tobar sent, or this person send us another client again, this person send us somebody else. You know, as agents, we always want to hear that, hey, they're coming to us from a certain doctor's office. The more you get from a doctor's office, the more you get. Of course, you know, we um, go in there. Um, we, we have uh, not just business cards. But in some doctors, we'll be able to put a banner and a banner. Uh, we'll be able to, uh, and some will be able to even put uh, brochures in every waiting room. But it just depends on how much the doctor will let you go ask. That's cool, man. If you don't ask, you will not receive. That's for sure. <laughs> um, you also seem to have more of a mentality of giving first. Um, there's there's a lot of agents that just like expect, you know, to get. Um, you're giving first and not expecting, knowing that if you give enough, you'll probably get. Talk through that. Hmm. It's a it's a tough one because I had to learn it the hard way. Uh, you know, as agents, when I started, when I when I remember what I went through, uh, there's nobody that gave me anything on a silver platter. I started like your dad in the debit business. It was rough. It was it was hard, and we were captive, so we we had to work a certain way. And so I learned that I had to do everything on my own, pretty much. And when I look at it now, it's it's different. You know, now I want to help people because most agents will try to feel that the moment you come in this business, that everybody should be giving you something. But agents in return have to give, you know, you got to put your effort in. Uh, it took me years to, to get to where agencies or carriers will sponsor big events, will take care of bigger payouts or bigger marketing dollars so it doesn't come automatically and, and i think um you know for me it was always how do i help somebody first you know because if you help somebody first it will come back to you or it's just always thinking of yourself so it just uh I, I learned it you know also as a kid that's what my mom taught me you know um little, little things that she would teach me that you do this first for somebody you know treat others like you want to be treated, mm -hmm. and then they'll come back to you so it's the way I've always done things. You know, right now I'm at a different stage where I'm trying to help agents get over that hump, get over that next level. Mm -hmm. And it's a different, a different beast. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Um, Christopher said, oh, he sent it to a host and panelists. Please post on YouTube. I said, you got it. Uh -oh. I actually sent a Slack to the team and said, hey, please, we'll post this webinar on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> Let's get the <laughs> feedback. Um, now, now it's, it's done, right? Like it's, you know, it's off my plate. Um, you, if someone wanted to, I got to, we'll, we'll take some more questions, but if someone wanted to talk to you, learn from you, work with you, whatever, like, where should we send them? What should they do? I mean, you can always go to our website, tovarfinancialgroup.com. Um, but I mean, you, you can read out great for me if you want. Uh, sure. you can put my number on there, 956-472. 9639. Uh, as always, a text is better because you don't know a number. Uh, if you text me, I'd be glad to be out. I get a lot of calls. You know, as, as you know, we got so many friends all over and uh, we're able to help each other out. So, yeah, is that it? 956-472-9639? That's it. Okay. Okay, cool. Oh, I, I know I've helped some uh, sometimes if you have an agency you know, and, and they're struggling with certain things, you know, I can probably get on with the group or talk to them. Um, if you're not doing Medicare and you have questions on how to get into Medicare, we can always go with the same thing or anything, you know, whatever, whatever help you need. That's cool, man. I love it. Tomorrow, find group. And we just had a question a second ago. And thank you for providing your cell phone number. You're probably getting a ton of texts. That was really kind. Most. Uh, Maybe I shouldn't have done that, right? I don't know. We'll find out, right? <laughs> no, but if you help people, then it's good, right? Oh, so it does. So people do freak out about it. It's funny. Um, but I, I mean, shoot, I was calling people from my personal cell phone earlier today, just off a list. You know, I'm like, hey, who cares? Um, would you guys work with persons outside the U.S.? That's a good question. I don't know that we're able to, to be honest. Um, I had someone ask me this earlier today. They said uh, they were in, where were they at? They were in like 
Europe or somewhere and they wanted to sell in the U S and I'm like, I don't know if you can, you know, um, Try to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Be crazy. Be pretty sweet. Honestly. Um, Oh, someone said, can you please repeat your cell phone? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in the chat again, but if you want to go ahead and say it, feel free. Dave. Okay. It's nine, five, six, four, seven, two, nine, six, three, nine. And then I did want to touch on something, Cody. I, I know building relationships is, is what I've done. Yes. Um, but I think one of the areas that we're seeing a huge, huge um, area where I'm starting to network a little more is in the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, some of the clinics that we see in the big cities like Austin, um, and I run into some of them or just any business owner that we're talking to, they're, they're extremely lost. Because they, they just don't talk to somebody. So if someone speaks Spanish, just any other any other language, but in my case, you know, I'm very fluent in Spanish. It, it opens up amazing doors. That's one of the things that we're starting to focus more on. You know, now that I'm back in Austin, you know, down here in the valley, 90% of the agents speak Spanish. Up in Austin is like so there's a massive opportunity for Spanish agents and how to network with small business owners and uh, oh, it's just so amazing. yes that's cool and you do a good job of that too um i'm also going to mention another link just because i'm getting some questions about working more with some coaching and training um i don't know if it'll actually link it but i'm doing a for, for a two-week, four-hour training class at CodyHaskins.com slash class. So if you guys want more training on different stuff, you can go there as well. Um, Joshua says, hi, Cody. Would you be able to or willing to do a life return seminar in Bermuda or outside the U.S.? Uh, so if Gabe will come with me, then yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's cool. What it takes me, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. We need, to, we need to do more of that, you know? Like, I'm actually starting to get that a lot. We've got – we had – hundreds of agents outside the country on our, just on our virtual, uh, which is pretty, pretty sweet, you know? Yeah. Um, I'll put that again and put next class is tomorrow night. So it's four different classes. I already done two, one of the four hours, but it's recorded just like this too. Um, Sunshine game is in, amazing info, LOL. Tuesday class was great. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's a class, new training class we're doing. Um, Gabe, what else have we? What else have we not mentioned? What What else do you have? And then what else? Uh, what other questions would y'all like to ask, Gabe? It's just um, you never stop networking. Never. Uh, I I did it for a while, and I, I sort of relied on it's just going to keep coming. You always have to nurture your relationships. You can get in, you can impress people. You can do very, you can do so much good for somebody, but sometimes they start forgetting. You just got to go remind them about the relationship. Yeah. Yes. And what you're able to do. So it's always about nurturing. Sometimes it's just small, it's full of um, As we get busy, as we grow, it is hard to still contact some of these people. Um, yeah. I've set, I've set different goals for myself lately. These phone calls to some of these, uh, there's offices, uh, wherever some of my key players are, just to contact them often and let them know that, you know, one of the things I don't do anymore is I don't really sit in front of clients anymore. So I don't really do the Medicare sell. A lot of people come in the office wanting to talk to me, but staff, uh, our agents take care of all of that. But I still go nurture the relationship. Yes. Yes, I love that. That's good feedback. We also have several questions. Um, I'm also going to answer one question that was from um, someone was asking me about the class. Oh, it's at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. I've already done Tuesday. I would do Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, we'll rifle some of these and we'll, we'll, we'll see how fast you can answer these. Um, any ideas how to market to the Hispanic community? One of my producers is fluent. Um, get involved in the community. Find out where the biggest Hispanic market is at. 
you know, in Austin, we know what neighborhoods tend to be more mm. lower income or just Spanish income or Spanish. Um, just getting involved in the small events. That's what I started doing. As a matter of fact, uh, what we're seeing in a lot of the big cities that the, there'll be like uh, fairs that are basically Latino fairs where everybody, every business owner there is Latino. Whenever you go in there, you're, you're bringing your product and you're basically in the market with all the Spanish people. Just try to find where they're at and um, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Yeah. Just got to find yeah. where the already in an area are and market I mean, you know make sure make sure you market in spanish make sure you, your flyers are in spanish some of your videos are in spanish and that's gonna that's gonna connect someone said how do you ask for doctor a doctor busy doctor for, for 20 minutes of their time it makes me nervous that's the challenge and i think it takes it takes a while uh some people will start with the staff some people will start with the office manager it just really depends on what city. Uh, here, it was very easy to get in. But at the same time, I think what happened is because we got to know what we're doing for the community, it was easy to say, hey, I want to talk to the, the me. But uh, it is a challenge. So you might have to start impressing maybe the front. And I think that's really what separates uh, agencies. I think, you know, as everything, we all work in the same market. We all compete, but I think at the same time, it's uh, your image has to look good. How you talk to them has to be impressive. Um, how you prepare really makes a big deal. So it is a challenge because uh, it's funny. The other day, I was with Adriana. So my doctor, I, I make a joke that my doctor will see me for ten minutes when I have my yearly checkups or whatever I got to go in there for. But when I swing by and we're going to talk business, we'll, we'll, we'll spend an hour. He'll make coffee for us, and we'll spend an hour talking to him. And Adriana was like, "Dad, like this is uh, this is amazing. Like, I gave you an hour of your time." And when and that's what y'all need. To, everybody needs to realize: small practice. It's the doctor's practice. He's the owner. He's the one with the goals. He's the one that controls everything. So if you can talk to the doctor or the office manager and understand what their goals are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to have those hard talks and say, hey, remember, you told me this is what you want. You're, you're not going to hit them. You're not going to hit these numbers because someone's not helping you do it. And it is a challenge, you know, but again, you start with the people you know. So if you're a personal doctor, you know, we have a, an agent that he reached out to his personal doctor and started doing the same things that we teach. You know, it's not just, hey, can I put my card here? It's, hey, can we have a meeting? You can have that meeting. If he's your personal doctor, then um, that's when you you have to take advantage of that relationship. Yes, you got to start from the bottom up. Hundred percent. Um, how many community events do you do a month? On average, you think your office? Um, it, it's died down because of COVID, but we were doing about two a week. Two a week. Point. Yeah. Like, so there was a time though. Yeah, there was so many events going on. Then you would have some big ones. So we, we used to do like the home and garden show. Yeah. Huge event. Uh, we would do every little event in the communities. There, there's a lot. They're, they're popping up again after COVID. But when I was new, to me, if you set up a booth and you can talk to people, you're going to get a lot of leads. Good. I love it. Um, this has been phenomenal info, by the way, Gabe. This has been awesome. He, Gabe, Gabe is rock. Has he not? Give me a get, give me a oh, uh, type of eight in chat for eight percent. Okay, if Gabe 8%, 8. has been crushing it tonight and sharing the valuable, incredible info. Dude, look at those eights, man, popping like crazy. Okay, I love it. Thank you all for that. Uh, we just buried the the. Thank the, you, everyone. Yeah, dude. Thank you, man. You're awesome. Um, Nancy says, "Love it." You're a good dude, man. You have a big heart. Uh, you care a lot about people. You gave out your cell phone. You're gonna get you know a bazillion texts, but you're gonna help some agents along the way, which is cool. Oh, yeah. so, Thank you. Thank you. He's also, Gabe's also speaking at 8%. He's actually speaking at two events. He's speaking at 8% live on stage at 8% at, uh, in Dallas, the Statler, end of July. So you got to, you know, you need to, you need to be there. Lapita says nine. I like that. <laughs> uh, and then he's also speaking at 8% Latinos in September in Houston as well. So we have two different events. He's going to be speaking at those. Um, 
I love it. Yeah, this is a thousand dollar course for free. Boom. How about that? Right. Oh, I like that. Let's go. Now you can put it up for sale, I guess, you know. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Dude, thank you for being on. Um, what, how would you like to close it out? What would you like to finish with? What information would you like to leave? No, just that, um, you know, I love what Cody's doing here because these little paws are, they bring a lot of value. I know I, I appreciate all the other ones I see. Um, if you're new, you need to make sure you get a mentor. You, you're under a good group. You have a good system. Uh, again, I didn't have it. it. Took me years to develop what we have, but I see that if you're with the right people and you ask the right questions, someone's going to help. It's not the only one. I know we're in a, so so many agents out there are trying to help. So you know, just make sure you ask the questions. You know, make sure you if you ask the questions and you ask for advice, make sure you go do it. Yeah, That's another thing right. too, right? You gotta you gotta put it in place. And uh, no, thank thank you, Cody, and again. Uh, everybody out there, appreciate your time watching this. And yeah, my number, just reach out for whatever you need. See how helping you, anybody out there. I love it. Thank you, Gabe. You're awesome, brother. Appreciate you being on. Um, I'm also going to share something really quick because I've been getting a lot of questions about this. I think Gabe has seen this, but we opened up a agent training class. We launched it at virtual. We have a few spots left, uh, but it's it's four hours with me and my team over two weeks. Um, class one was last night with Landon on leads, marketing, and ads. The next one is tomorrow night, Thursday night, uh, phones, text, and scripts. Class three is next Tuesday, sales 101, objections, and questions. Class four is next Thursday, sales process and closing. So it's Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. If you missed last night's, you can get the recording and you can still be on for tomorrow night. It's CodyAskins.com forward slash class. It's 50 bucks, 49 bucks per class. So $199 total. And you can go to CodyAskins.com slash class to check that out. I'm trying to link it because I'm getting a lot of questions about it. But I want, for those that can make it, we'd love to have you a part of that. Um, someone just said, Bill says I need a ticket to 8%. Dude, we need to get you a ticket to 8%. Okay. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, Gabe, you're awesome. It's been a blast. It's been fun. You guys reach out to Gabe. Uh, if you have questions, let Gabe know. He's amazing. Uh, love this dude. I'll see you in Tampa here in a few weeks. And I Thank you, everyone. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you, Cody. This is always nice. And we'll do it. Let's go. Thank you, brother. Have a phenomenal night. Thank you for being on. Happy Wednesday. Let's rock and roll. And let's talk soon. Thank you for being on. And then um, Bill and Tristan, I will have the team reach out about 8% tickets. So you can some, come see Gabe and I speak in Dallas. Okay. Appreciate we'll y'all. Let's go. Have a phenomenal night. Gabe, you rock. All right. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, everyone. Um, appreciate y'all. Have a great night. Have a good week. See you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Welcome back to How to Sell Life Insurance. This is going to be a video, like a recap video, and also some new training that I haven't released before on how to sell more life insurance. I did a video uh, called How to Sell Life Insurance Dash Amazing. It was, it looks like it was uh, January.